Hey guys, welcome back to Mind State, where we help you reach your full potential. How many of you feel like your minds are always on? Do you worry about the past or anxious about the future? If so, does it seem like your mind controls you? If this is the case, then I have some good news for you. You don't have to be controlled by your mind anymore. In this video, I will show you how to take control of your thoughts and make them work for you instead of against you. In the morning, you may wake up feeling energetic and ready to start the day. Your mind, however, will probably make you press the snooze button and sleep in for a few more minutes. You might decide that it's a good idea to be healthier and eat less sweets, but then your mind might make you break that promise by eating a large piece of chocolate cake. After eating it, you might feel guilty about what you've done. Or perhaps your mind has focused on preparing for this interview by reminding you of your best qualities. However, it might also remind you of any flaws that employers want you to avoid discussing during an interview such as past failures or rejections from other jobs. If you've decided to make a commitment to eat healthy, you may find that it's difficult to resist other foods. For example, if you've decided to give up chocolate fudge cake, you might feel tempted by cakes and bakeries and hear a voice telling you to eat them. But don't give up! It's important not to get discouraged when things don't go as planned. Instead, think about how far you've come in your journey towards healthy eating and keep going. Today, I'm going to share with you some thoughts about the monkey mind and the serene mind in order to explain the difference between them. The first thing we need to understand is that the monkey mind is always jumping from branch to branch looking for pleasure or instant gratification. The monkey mind complains, compares, and criticizes. In contrast, the serene mind focuses on discipline and long-term gain. Instead of being critical, it is calm, composed, collaborative, caring, and compassionate. Understanding how the mind works can help us to make that transformation and change. We all have that conversation in our heads, telling us to get up or stay in bed. There's one voice that says, You've had a tough week and need more rest. While another says, This is going to be the start of a great week, so get up and go for it. The mind is like a monkey that jumps from tree to tree, but it can also be a lake. Intelligence can be proactive and focused on getting proper rest, which will help you have a good day and week. You know how you can sometimes eat something and it tastes delicious, but then the next time you try it, it's just not as good. That's because when we experience something like eating fries, we use our memories to decide whether or not we like it. We also use our memories to decide if we want to do something again, like eat fries again. This is how habits are formed. So in short, if you want to change your eating habits, start by changing the way your brain remembers those foods. I know, I know, we're all busy. But there are actually a few things you can do right now that will make your life much easier in the long run, and they don't even involve spending a bunch of money. The first thing is to invest in some good habits. The second is to start noticing your bad habits. The third is to create systems for making sure those good habits stick around and those bad ones don't get the chance to sneak back in. Let's break it down. First. Invest in some good habits that'll help you be more productive and efficient at work and at home. Second, start noticing when you're doing something that's not so great for you, and start working toward changing it. And third, create systems that allow you to keep up with those new positive habits without having to think about them every time. Because if you did have to think about them every time, they wouldn't last. I'm sure you've heard it before. You can do it all at once. We've all been told that we need to work on one thing at a time, and that if we try to change everything in our lives at once, we'll never succeed. But here's the thing. Your mind doesn't work like that. Your mind is an addict. It wants things it wasn't meant to have, and when it gets them, it gets hooked. So even though your eyes are saying that bed looks more comfy than that bench press, your mind isn't going to listen to your eyes, or anything else. It's going to keep pushing for what it wants, and if you let it, it will convince you that this time is different from all those other times when you tried and failed. But every time you try something new and fail, you're just reinforcing the message in your mind that this is impossible. And so then next time around, when you try again, your mind will be even more desperate and determined than ever before. 
But here's the good news. There's a way out of this cycle. You don't have to keep doing everything wrong until finally one day something works out right. Are you liking the video so far? Before we get back, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to get notified of our new uploads. Now let's get right back to it. Are you struggling to control your impulses and stay on track with your goals? I know how it feels to have a million things you want to do, but not be able to get started. I've been through it myself. But there's good news. Willpower is a muscle and like all muscles, it can be strengthened with practice. And the best part is that the 5 R's to be done can help you do just that. We all want to change our lives, but it's important to know why you're trying to do it. The first R, reason. What's the real reason why you want to change your life? Because if there isn't a deep, profound reason for why you want to make the change, it'll be really hard. It won't just happen on its own. When you start making a change in your life, think about what your real reason for making that change is. That way, when things get hard and challenging along the way, there's something deep inside of us that reminds us why we're doing this thing in the first place. Researching your reasons is the second R in our 4R model. And it's the most important step because research gives you ammunition and depth. Researching your reasons means that you are absorbing information. Reading books and watching documentaries and listening to podcasts about the habit you want to create. The more information you absorb, the more likely you are to create transformation. People can say, do you remember when we read that study? Do you remember when we watched that documentary? Do you remember when you spoke to that coach? And suddenly, your reasoning power has increased dramatically. The third R, repetition. If you want to make something a priority in your life, it has to be a small step and a big priority. If you want to start going to the gym, make that the one big thing you're going to achieve that day and set a time that you can actually make it. Don't set it at an awkward time. I know someone who literally used to struggle working out, so instead of that, what she would do was when she would roll off the bed, she would have her yoga mat and all of her gym equipment laid out right near her bed. She had no excuse. It was the first thing she saw in the morning. The fourth R, responsibility. So why is it important? Well, a lot of times we think of motivation as being this thing that comes from within ourselves, like a light switch that turns on when we need it. But what if instead of relying on just our own willpower and motivation, we had other people holding us accountable? What if we had someone who would remind us what was at stake if we didn't do the thing? Well, there's a saying, no man is an island. And it means exactly what it sounds like, that even though you may feel like you're alone sometimes, and that no one else can possibly understand your struggle or empathize with your pain, there are always others out there who have been through similar situations themselves. You might not know them personally, but trust me, you're not alone. And last but certainly not least, is reward. Reward is the fifth and final step to strengthening your serene mind. This technique helps you train your monkey mind to stop running chaotic situations in your head. By rewarding yourself for taking small steps towards achieving your goals, you can help train your monkey mind to accept more difficult challenges in the future. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Did you enjoy and learn how to end lazy behavior forever? We'd love to know. So leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time!